sunglasses. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host, Victor Nunley, and I am the Comic Hero. Yeah, that's right, folks. I just teleported in here. And everyone is dead silent because they can't believe I just did that. But anyway, um, this, this is episode 101, folks. And I want to thank everyone who's watched episode 100. Uh, I think I have nearly 50 views for episode 100 alone. And, uh, oh, you know, but I, I think I'm, you know, I'm just scratching the surface. I know I'm going to get more, more views than that. Besides... Never, never settle. Never. All right. Um, it's time to give away a free prize pack. Now, here's the comic hero question of the week from last week. True or false? The, prof the juggernaut is Professor X's stepbrother. The correct answer is true. And eight people uh, answered correctly. And I'm about to draw their name. So the winner of the free Comic Hero Prize Pack for this week is... Somebody already won before. Chadwick Griffin. So sorry, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby celebrated way too early. <laughs> yeah, so, congratu so congratulations, Chad. You win a free Comic Hero Prize Pack. Um, so, so yeah, oh boy, yeah, yeah, sorry about that, Bobby, I really wanted to pull your name, I really wanted to pull your name badly, but sometimes my, sometimes when my hand isn't, when my hand is inside a, a, a paper bag like that, I'm trying to pull someone's name, it has a mind of its own. All right, uh, so here's the question for this week, what borough of New York is the Steve Rogers Captain America from? Now keep in mind, this is the the answer to this question is also a line in the movie Captain America: The First Avenger. He said so when he was battling the Red Skull. So there, there's a hint right there. All right. So I gotta ask. Any questions? questions, I walk around in. questions, I can drive in. questions I walk All right. I have two questions for this week. And the first question is from Johnny Ringo from West Monroe, Louisiana. He asks, who's your favorite comics writer of all time? And who's your favorite artist? Oh, Johnny. Why did you have... Oh, that's that's like asking me, like, what's my favorite soda? Because I don't have... I don't just have one favorite soda. I, I like a whole bunch, whole bunch of them. Coke, Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Sprite, 7-Up. But if you... I mean... Wow. Favorite writer of all time. Favorite artist of all time. I don't know. I, I would probably have to say, well, Mr. Marvel himself, Stan Lee. I mean, he. I mean, after all, he practically, along with him and uh, Joe, uh, well, him, Jack Kirby, and and his brother Larry Lieber, they practically created the Marvel universe. So Stan Lee. Now, my favorite artist. That's a, that. That's not so much uh, of, of a no-brainer as as writer, because I you know I've you know during my time of reading comics I, I've read a lot of a lot of books that have um, had some some very amazing artists and I've also read some books that had some artists that were just awful. I would probably have to say, uh, even though I only have one only have one issue of a book that he actually penciled. I would have to say the late great Jack Kirby. I mean, there, I mean, th th there's some other artists that, that I like, like Dan Jurgens, Jerry Ordway, um, George Perez, Ed McGinnis, um, you know, folks like folks like that. You know, but I mean, the King, but Jack King Kirby. I mean, there's a reason why they call him the King. Because the one thing a lot of folks don't understand is he wasn't just an artist for Marvel. He was also an artist for DC back in the 70s. He created the New Gods. That's right, folks. He created the New Gods. And uh, so if it weren't for him, there'd be no Dark Side. There'd be no Orion. There'd be no Mr. Miracle. There'd be no Big Barda. There'd be no New Genesis. 
sometimes as as a writer and artist you have to you, you have to like you can't just write and, and, and draw you got to create you, you got to create characters who 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 will stand the test of time and both Stanley and Jack Kirby have done just that as a matter of fact together they have created characters um, like the Incredible Hulk, the Fantastic Four, the X-Men. I mean, I can just go on and on. And then Stan Lee also created Spider-Man along with the, the late great Steve Ditko. And uh, Jack Kirby, oh, by the way, Jack Kirby also co-created Captain America. He, he uh, co-created with Joe Simon. All right, so I hope that answers your question. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Now I have a second question. Can we find it? One of these days, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start back writing all my questions down and then tape them to a uh, to a to a to a card like I like I used to do. Look very professional. Uh, let's see. There was one. Oh yes, 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 yes. Here's, this question right here is from Gustav Michel from Reston, Louisiana. He asked opinion on DC Rebirth. Well, guys. Um, I, I just hope they bring all the characters back, all the original characters from the original DC universe back. But however, if I I, I kind of love, I kind of like the new Fifty Two version of Wonder Woman because this is the ultimate Wonder Woman. This, I mean, she is my favorite character in DC right now. Now keep in mind, this Wonder Woman, like unlike the original Wonder Woman, wasn't born of clay. She is the biological daughter of Hippolyta and Zeus. And and then there's also, and then we also, there's a, a much better backstory about why she wears her bracelets. Excuse me. Um, oh, excuse me again. Oh, I got you got a guess. Anyway, um, um, the reason why she wears the bracelets in New 52 is because since she is, um, she is the daughter of Zeus, she also has her powers, and the braces pretty much suppress them. Because once those braces come off, she becomes living thunder. And you, it, and you think kicking, you, you think kicking your, you think her kicking your butt beat will be bad enough with the braces on? Just wait till she takes those braces off. And just like Teresa Merritt, God rest her, used to say on "That's My Mama," it's about to be nostalgia time. All right. But and then another character that uh, that I kind of like in the new Fifty Two would probably be Cyborg. I mean, this Cyborg, I mean, he's still Victor Stone, but he is a much more awesome version of Cyborg. And, and not only that, I mean, it, I mean, the, yeah, the well, he started out as a as a star athlete in his high school, but then, but instead of an explosion at his father at his father's laboratory, not this time. This star, this cyborg, this Victor Stone became cyborg as a result of an attack by Darkseid. And um, I don't know. I, I really like the cyborg and Wonder Woman in New Fifty Two. Now everyone else, eh? I, I, Batman was okay. Flash, eh? Green Lantern. Kind of raised my eyebrow with with, with with what they did with Hal Jordan, but Superman they did him so wrong. I mean, it really. I mean, first off, the one thing that made Superman a, a great character in the original DC universe was, well, for, for starters, like I think his marriage to Lois Lane actually worked. Now, a lot of times when you, you see a you, you have a the character on a main book and then and then the uh there is their significant other a lot of times it doesn't really work but but for some reason I felt like that worked and uh but what and then another thing about Superman in the original DC universe is that his I think another thing was that his his parents Jonathan well his adopted parents Jonathan and Martha Kent were both alive throughout uh, his I mean throughout much of his throughout the early part of his adulthood. Of course, Jonathan Kent in the original DC Universe dies after being attacked by Brainiac. In the New 52 version, both Jonathan and Martha Kent die right during Clark's late teens. 
and, and we see kind of, and then after that, we see kind of how unstable he he really is now. If, there, if there's one thing Superman has never really been, in my opinion, it's unstable. And then on top of that, they decide to write some story. I guess they thought, hey, let's 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 do something where Vandal Savage takes away most of his powers. What the heck, DC? And then, and then and don't even get me started with Teen Titans. Oh my goodness, that Teen Titans. I don't even know why. That book got canceled once. I don't even know why uh, why it's back on shelves again because that book is to me is a complete dumpster fire. And and another uh, wait another thing I like about the, the new Fifty Two though Red Lanterns that was such a great book. I don't know why the heck it got canceled. I mean I think DC got their pri priorities uh, uh, crisscrossed on that one because I mean Red Lanterns did very well. The Teen Titans just had had all these just had all these moronic characters on there. I think, well, yeah, actually just about all of them were mor moronic. But yeah, go back to the original DC, just leave Wonder Woman and Cyborg alone. That's my answer. All right, that's it for any questions. If you have any questions that you want to ask, contact info is down there. Now then, this is, I have some, uh, some, so, uh, some news regarding the DC vs. Marvel segment that I'm going to share with you right after the segment. But for right now, I have a DC vs. Marvel fight that, that I've thought of, and this one is going to be high-flying and hard-hitting. On the DC side, we have Hawkman. On the Marvel side, we have Archangel. Not Angel, but Archangel. These two are going to duke it out in a segment I like to call... DC. Versus Marvel. Welcome to DC vs. Marvel. Today, it's Hawkman vs. Archangel. Since there have been different incarnations of Hawkman, let's go with the Carter Hall version. Hawkman possesses Nymph Metal, which grants him flight via artificial feather wings, enhanced strength and eyesight, temperature regulation, limited physical regeneration, reincarnation, and archaic weaponry. Archangel possesses flight via metal wings, razor sharp feather protection, healing factor, aerial adaptation, and near immunity to injury. Who will win? Both these guys have aces in the hole. Hawkman can come back from the dead, and Archangel is practically immortal. Archangel will win, but it'll only be a matter of time before another incarnation of Hawkman shows up thirsty for more. This fight ends in a draw, and that concludes this DC vs. Marvel fight. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy the DC vs. Marvel segment, and um, now, now the, the the news about the um, the DC vs. Marvel segment. I have some good news, some bad news. Bad news is, starting in next week's episode, it will no longer be called the DC. It'll be no longer called DC vs. Marvel. Uh, instead, the name of the of the uh, the segment is going to be called the, the Comic, Comic Hero, Hero Throwdown, Throwdown Showdown. Showdown. And in this segment, um, it's good. It's not going to be just DC versus Marvel. It could be DC versus Marvel. It could be DC versus DC. It could be Marvel versus Marvel. DC versus Valiant. Uh, DC ver Marvel versus IDW. What have you? Nothing is off limits. As long as it's a comic book character, you you can re you can request any character you want, any characters you want to go up against each other. All right, that's it for DC versus Marvel. Now it's time for comically speaking, so without further ado, let's talk comics. All right, there's only gonna be one thing that I'm gonna talk about in uh, this week's uh, segment of comically speaking, and that's what DC is doing with some of the classic Hanna-Barbera characters. They're pretty much giving them a reboot, and um, and kind of bringing them from the the decade from from whence they they first came on the scene all the way to the all the way today. They're pretty much modernizing all of them. And one and the character, like first off, they're doing this to the Flintstones and in the Scooby Doo. 
Now I saw like the, the, the character designs for, for the Flintstones. Well, they're not modernizing the Flintstones. They're kind of making them a little more realistic than, than, um, than uh, the late great William Hand, the late great Joseph Barbera uh, had intended for them to be. I'm kind of mm, kind of raised an kind of raised an eyebrow on that. And then also they're doing the same thing with Scooby Doo. Now they're modernizing them. I don't know if they're going to. Um, I'm, I'm quite sure they're not going the, that the whole conspiracy theory about them being being potheads and, and all that is is going to be present. Because that, because you know ever since ever since the ever since the, the show first came on back in 1969 that I mean for as the years have gone by there have been that's been a conspiracy theory that they're that they're that they're these that that they're these pothead these potheaded teenage kids who got kicked got thrown out of their parents' house and and then they're and they and they're having to scratch and to survive inside of a van and all that. I don't think DC is going to do that. And then there's some other characters that um, that they're also going to modernize, like for for example, um, Johnny Quest, Space Ghost, the Herculoids, the Galaxy Trio, the Impossibles, Frankenstein Jr. Yeah, don't not sure if I'm going to read those books. Now, what I hope is that they now. But those books, eh, I guess so. But, hey, modernize the Jetsons and Dino Mutt, and then we're talking. Ha! Yes! All right, that's it for Comically Speaking. Now then, let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. Oh, um, there was one thing that I forgot about in Comically Speaking, and that's, that's the release of Suicide Squad. It's coming out in theaters later on this year. Stars Will Smith as Deadshot. And then Jared Leto plays the Joker. And let me tell you, his version of the Joker scares me. Well, it doesn't exactly scare me as badly as, as um, the late great Heath Ledger playing the Joker, but it scares me. Oh, and also Superman vs. Batman Dawn of Justice comes out in theaters next month. I'm definitely going out to see that. Um, as a matter of fact, they've already released some pop vinyls to uh, promote the movie. They they uh, they released the Aquaman uh, pop vinyl now. Aquaman is going to be played by Jason Momoa. If you don't know who that is, he played um, Ronan on Stargate Atlantis. Now, oh, and he also and also he's um. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, oh that, that's right. Oh, and oh. Conan the Barbarian. Yes, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, th thanks, Bobby. Um, and, al and also, um, uh, um, Gal Gadot is playing Wonder Woman. Now, if you don't know who that is, she was in the Fast and Furious 6. And Fast 5. All right, now on to the comics I bought this week. First up is Avengers number 6. Now, I'm still a little behind on this, but uh, in recent issues, here, here's a, a few things that have happened. The J, the Doctor J Foster Thor and the Sam Wilson Captain America are now in a relationship with each other, and not only that, Ms. Marvel gets kicked out of the Avengers. So, judging by this cover, it looks like the, the the Vision is going to is going to wreck shop on all on all the other Avengers. Never, ever want to get in a fight with someone who could who who could pick up me on the other than Thor. Bad idea. All right, first. All right, next up is Guardians of Infinity number two. Now I've yet to get started with this book. Now keep now bear with me, folks. I I live a busy life, and sometimes I mean I am re, I am reading I am reading some books though. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm I'm not saying that I'm not. I'm just saying that I can't read every book. Besides, I would have to not work for one day, not be interrupted for one day. But what I can't tell you about this book, by the way, is that uh, this stars some of the um, the members of the Guardians, like the um, like Rocket, Groot, um, and Drax. And then there and then there's some other folks. This is pretty much a 
an amped up. This is like I, I want to say like the Guardians in um, in the future. So this so this suggests that both that uh that Groot, Rocket, and uh, Drax don't age. Although one thing about Drax, he used to be human. All right, and lastly, Justice League of America number seven. Now, what's going on in this book? Oh, this is such a masterpiece by, by Brian Hitch. Um, the, the Kryptonian god Rayo has um, arrived on Earth, and he has um, he's tried to convert everyone to Rayoism, and everyone you know everyone buys into it. But then Rayo strikes and he takes down just about all the Justice League with the exception of Batman and Cyborg. Alright, that's three I bought, which brings the total number of comics I bought since December of 1997 to 7,203. Woo! <laughs> Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and I just want to I, you know, I'm just amazed by all by the outpour of of suggestions, of views, of of uh, the positive feedback that I that I've gotten. Not not um in not in the, in the past month, but you know, throughout this show's this this show's run, and and just like I said before, this show is going to go on until I am physically unable to do the show. So by the time that I, so by the time that I'm probably gonna be done doing it, I'll probably end up being a, a great grandfather, or I'll probably gonna be doing my episodes all, all hung, all hung over and old haggard and hung over in a dagger wheelchair or something. But um, but but just I just want to thank y'all. And I learned, you know, uh, last week I um, I had a bit of a, of a scenario, and I learned that. Never to never. Uh, if somebody suggests something to you, not only should we take it into consideration, we should also we should also execute it as well. Uh, because a lot of times, I mean, it, I mean, yeah, this is my show, but if anyone has any views here, if has any suggestions, your suggestions will not go unnoticed. And as a matter of fact, not only will they not go unnoticed. I may even try them. All right. Um, all right. Now here's the question again for the con the free comic hero prize pack. What borough of New York is the Steve Rogers Captain America from? Everyone who answers correctly will be entered into a drawing for a free comic hero prize pack, and the drawing will take place in episode 102. And and for those who who just want who wouldn't mind paying for T-shirts. Uh, for adults, they're ten dollars, and for children, they're five. And um, as a matter of fact, I have a lot of T-shirts that I have to make, or I have to have made for a lot of folks. I mean, uh, Bobby included. I need to. I need to make it. I need to hurry up and make his shirt. <laughs> I need. To, I mean, and not and not just him, but like a whole bunch of folks again. So. Yeah. So if I if if you have uh, won a free if you have, if I pulled your name for a drawing for a free comic hero prize back and you haven't gotten your your shirt yet, it's coming. I promise. Oh, and Brian Ferguson from Wake Forest, North Carolina. You should be getting your T-shirt in now. All right. I'm Victor Nutley. I'm the comic hero. See you next week for episode 102 back here at Clint's Comics. Till then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero. <laughs>
All right, now last week, I asked, true or false? The junk, dang it, that's going on a blooper reel. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Um, and um, I tell you, I'm still amazed. Uh, not, I, one thing about me, I don't get amazed by myself. I don't get amazed at myself. I get amazed by how many people, I mean, my, the, like the fan base that's growing. I mean, I want to, I just want to thank all of y'all for the outpour of encouragement, the outpour of views, the outpour of suggestions. Because let me tell you something. What, what, one thing, one thing that I'll, one thing that I'll learn, I, you know, I had a bit of a, Small uh, scenario that happened last weekend, and, and, and it helped me to, to realize something. Never, ever, um, ne ne <laughs> 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 <laughs>